started. It's all yours. All right. Hello, everyone. This is the TSC weekly call. You should all be familiar with the antitrust policy notice, which is displayed on the screen if you're online. I don't know if we have people on the phone, maybe a couple, but uh, hopefully you're familiar with this. This is a publicly open meeting. Anybody is welcome to listen in or even participate if you feel like it. We on merely ask that you are aware of the code of conduct and behave like a decent human being. <laughs> Always makes me laugh that I have to say that every time, but sadly it's necessary nowadays. All right, so with that uh, being done, uh, let's go on. So first, first, I only have one announcement, or maybe one and a half. The first one is just to highlight what I had already uh, said last week regarding the holidays for the next two weeks. We will not have the TSC call. And so the next call will be in, on January 9th. So I don't think that should be a surprise to anyone. Um, there is the half announcement I want to also make is that the, um, you remember that uh, we decided to extend the size of the TSC. We added uh, four seats, five seats, uh, four seats. To, we extended from 11 to 15, and this was pending approval by the board. I'm happy to report that the governing board is actually voting. I think the voting has not officially closed, but everybody has already cast a vote in favor. So I think we'll, we'll have that done. I will let you know when it's really officially announced, but uh, no surprises. There's a tidbit that's of interest there is that Brian not really knowing what our plans were, where um, he actually put in the proposal to the governing board that you know the the we could would have the ability to set up an election to f do that sooner rather than later so it's up to us if we wanted we could hold a special election to fill in the additional seats i don't expect us to do that we went through this a little bit when we made the decision and the consensus was now we'll just wait for the next cycle to add the extra seats so my expectation is we'll stick to that plan. But so just so you know, the, I expect that the board will actually have, allow us to hold a special election if we wanted to do that sooner. So with that being said, we have a bunch of quarterly reports. Some came pretty late. I'm not sure we have time. Everybody had the time to go through them all but uh, let's try to see what we've got. Um, Aries, um, the, there were no issue reported. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. I think there was a question from Hart or something. Did I, oh yeah, thank you, there it is, right in front of us. So, I don't know if it's important to discuss this now, but uh, uh, it's probably yeah. not. It was just a question for the Aries team. Yeah, it wasn't super relevant to the project. That was all right. So let's keep on moving. Then we can we can see offline how that works out. Technical working group China. Um, seems like the working group is doing well. There was one question slash issue brought up. There's a, pro a question with regard the, to China cryptographic standards. Do you have anybody from the China group on the call? I think they joined for the previous call. This was the yes, I know, and I said sorry. We'll do it next week, and yeah. now there's nobody. Yeah, my uh, bad. I thought Jay would be on, but I don't see him. So, 
I think but you see few of China. Is the question yeah. is the question on the wiki somewhere? Because I'm looking and I'm yeah, not... it's right there. If you look at the Zoom window, it's right in front. Oh, of it's on the Zoom window. Okay. But it's on the wiki. I mean. Oh, oh, that they have a question for the TSC. Sorry, misunderstood. Yes, Thanks. that's what I meant. Okay. So. And I think I understand what this is about. And I think this issue was brought up before. Are we supporting China cryptographic standards? Didn't that question come up in the context of URSA specifically? Well, yes, these kinds of questions have come up in the context of URSA. I mean, essentially, this is just a request for modular cryptographic protocols. Like right now, if you look at a lot of the DLTs, like things like SHA are, uh, are baked into many of them pretty deeply. Um, and these guys, every, every time, you know, uh, there's an update, they have to go rip everything out. And Dave, this you ends speak. Up turning into a question. This ends up turning into a question of which frameworks are intending to support Ursa to a certain extent, because we've added the Chinese crypto support at the Ursula layer, haven't you heard? Uh, no, we haven't. We haven't completely broken everything down where you can. So we, we don't support modular hashing for everything yet. Um, ideally, this is this is just a question of modular crypto that like um, we, we don't know that necessarily we want to maintain their implementation of stuff, but uh, we should have modular hashing and signatures just out of good design. Yes. Um, and if so, we had this, then then it would make things simple for them. Dave yeah, might know yeah. more on this. He uh, he might have talked to these people more. Yeah. So we can. I mean, I think that's what it's about. Is, is they're saying, okay, we want to be able to support uh, China cryptographic standards. So. The, the project should be written in such a way that it's easy for them to add the support. I think that's what it's about, or easier. So. Well, right, but people should be clear about where it can actually happen. You're not gonna do it for zero knowledge, right? If you wanna replace ECDSA with SM2 and SM4, okay, right? So, um, so Gary, yeah, uh, all of the standards are for uh, it's mostly, it's not even really uh, ECDSA mostly, it's it's hashing and it's it's the symmetric crypto operations. So it's essentially- Well, signing two, well, signing two right? SM, SM2 and SM4. Trust me, I built security products, right? Everybody in the world claims they need Ghost, SM2, SM4, and whatever. And by the way, I built products that sold hundreds of millions of dollars. I've never had those who sold in those countries, but- um, I'm with you. I, I think this need to be clear, right? Because like ghost, you yeah. could say ghost, but like CLS doesn't always have it in there, right? And um, so uh, I think modular crypto is the answer and people should be able to contribute where, but you're never going to be able to have standards for like most, like you're not going to be able to do like indie stuff with China standards. Yeah, no, but so, I, I think that's fine, Gary. I think still, I think it would be, it's good practice that the TSC could, you know, tell everybody, every project, please we to keep that in mind and where it makes sense, make it modular so that people in China can support the standards they want there. That's all. Okay. I think that's all. Yeah, and I pinged mm -hmm. Dave Hughesby so that he can report back on how some of that is going to. So he got a marker on that one too. All right, thank you. Avalon. Seems like things are going pretty smoothly. There was no issue reported. I don't know if anybody has any questions. Is Eugene on? He's not on, but I offered to okay. field questions for him. All right, let's carry on then. Next one is Quilt. So they didn't report any issue. 
some may have uh, seen the fact that you know they report they have had a one zero release. I think we've talked about it before. It has taken some people by surprise because they never asked for approval from the TSC to do that. They just did it and it was, we figured it out eventually, but, uh, and there was no ill intent in that. They just didn't realize they were supposed to come to the TSC. Also, they started the entire process right before the vote even took place. Um, for some of the different things that were changing. So I think that that kind of added to the confusion. Okay, is there any comments or questions about this? Otherwise we can keep on moving. I guess I, I just have a question on Quilt. I mean, maybe, maybe this is for like, you know, Dan or anybody else who's on there. Do they, I mean, it's supposed to be for, I mean, I, you know, integrating stuff, but have they ever reached out to any of the other blockchain projects? In so I see David. Uh, David Fueling is on. David, do you hear me? Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Hey, thanks Sorry. for the report. Sure. So Gary, you can ask him. I should have posted it in there. I, I guess I was just been surprised. I mean, maybe it has been happening, but I'm surprised that. Have you guys been having conversations with any of the other, with any of the blockchain projects on how Quilt would fit in? Uh, certainly, um, Hyperledger's on our radar. So I think Quilt has recently just sort of picked back up, uh, at least from my, like me being the maintainer, uh, I'd say in the last five, six months. So I have not, but it's definitely on my radar. Um, We've been mostly focusing on um, on like l layer one crypto blockchains and and fiat, so we haven't really engaged the hyperledger community yet, but would like to. And if you guys know any pointers of projects we should like maybe focus on, that would be actually helpful from my perspective. When Quilt joined Hyperledger, we had a bunch of conversations with them about integration with Indy, um, and we've done some things to try to make it so that the um, payment plugins and the, the payment addressing scheme inside of the indie plugins that the Sovereign Foundation maintains will work with Hyperledger or with uh, Interledger's um, addressing scheme. So I think there are um, integration opportunities we haven't taken advantage of yet. And, you know, I know that the team that brought Interledger in um, was really open and, and had a bunch of conversations with, with the indie group. I don't know if any of the other um, frameworks took advantage of that or not. I think too, in uh, maybe even in the last year, we've um, evolved some of our addressing standards. So the interledger address is still there, but it, that would loosely map to what you would imagine like an IP address being. So it's not really human usable. Um, and there's a new standard um, that has come out of the interledger community called a payment pointer, which loosely maps to something like a, like the DNS um, for human usability. So uh, I'd love to work more closely with with Indy in, in that regard or, or anyone else that's interested in that. Gotcha, thanks. All right, thank you. I know they they were, I mean, very early on, I remember being asked if we could do an integration fabric. The problem is there's a mismatch in terms of the level because Interledger is very payment oriented. Yeah, that's been on my mind, at least, um, maybe somehow being able to transfer um, a fungible token, perhaps between um, maybe even two networks, maybe that are, that would be using the same token, but I'm not sure if that's a real use case. Yeah, I think I think when um, Fabric gets back to looking at Fab token again, it might be something to pick up. And then, and then other frameworks that are more payments oriented, like Aroha, might be a better starting point right now. Uh, and, and finally, I'll note the integration might actually be something that happens not really at the framework layer, at the ledger layer, but more at, a, at an application layer. So uh, one other final suggestion might be, um, you know, if there were sample applications for Fabric um, or for any others that involved payments, maybe showing a sample that, that showed how to, you know, how that might plug in using Quilt to, um, you, know, in, you know, to other payment rails um, or something like that could be interesting. Yeah, and just to clarify, the 
it's not like the work on fab token has stopped or you know it's just uh, not part of two zero that's all okay maybe you could connect uh people are working on it but okay so i think that does it for quilt and we have one last one that i caught before it was too late learning material development working group bobby i have to say uh, i'm i'm con constantly impressed by the amount of energy bobby is displaying and i'm a bit saddened that you know this group is struggling because it doesn't feel fair given the energy that Bobby is putting into this. Bobby. Well, thank you, but it's not just me. There's a bunch of people that really work hard to try to organize this materials. But thank you. So you've listed a few issues. I don't know that there is much that the TSC can do in this regard. Um, basically the membership is just the more we get support from the community, the more members will want to help out. Um, and again, the edX update and the GitHub stuff is just something we work through every week. So, you know, there is also, um, if you scroll down a little bit, there was a planned work product that, um, I wanted to run by the TSC. If you click on that link, um, this was just after the call last week. You guys were talking about how to organize yourselves and get the documentation in places. So again, our working group uh, would like to take this on and hopefully keep a track record of all the decisions that are made in the documentations once they've been approved. So that's just up for discussion if you want to go forward with that. All right, that's interesting. Thank you. So I saw that there was a comment from uh, Dan, he pointed out that you know we're waiting for Sinona to come back with the proposal for a task force. So that could be something they can take into account. I don't want to speak for Salona, but she she and I were working together with this. Yes, I, I did I didn't want to formalize it because we had a calendar snafu this week and Bobby was participating and Grace and some other people, but until we all get together and you know, sign on the dotted line is what everyone's committed to. I didn't want to bring it forward to the TSC. So hopefully yeah, after after the holidays, we'll be able to yeah. bring something back. No, it's totally fine. I mean, thank you. All right. So I think that does it, unless anybody has any questions for Bobby. No, no questions. But I think okay. part of what we were talking about last week was um, trying to get the the documents consolidated so maybe the the tracking is still interesting like that calendar on there so you can see when things got decided uh but having everything consolidated into one place uh that was my recollection of one of the main objectives that that task yeah. force would take on yes i agree all right let's move on so i highlighted two proposals that I think we should be able to make a decision on based on my reading of the group uh, as of last week. Um, so let me go back to the agenda decisions. Forgo the project lifecycle incubation state. So we had discussions, but it seemed pretty, you know, most people either were silent or felt very strongly that we shouldn't do that. So I would like to simply propose that we reject that uh, proposal and we just keep incubation in a project life cycle. If anyone would like to call that for a vote. So I am calling it for a vote. <laughs> so, so we're voting affirmatively against a negative resolution on the uh <laughs> i mean the you know that's that's exactly right i want the outcome to be rejected i mean to be that the proposal is rejected <laughs> okay so the proposal oh. is to reject the proposal to reject the incubation state <laughs> to forego the incubation state don't make it worse than it is do we need to um do we need to 
have proposals that uh, I mean, I, I don't know that we need to so vote I know to where you're going. We, I mean, if we do nothing, it, nothing changes and this is the way it is. But I think it's actually important given that the question was raised that, you know, this, and you raised it for-, uh, for Can uh, we, can we, yeah, but can we say the proposal is something like the TSC, you know, visited the, you know, right in the meeting notes that the TSC looked at the project life cycle and decided to keep the incubation state. So just more of like a keeping track of our thoughts rather than like rejecting a proposal. So why don't we, <laughs> okay. So the proposal is to remove the um, incubation state from the project life cycle. That's right. So we're taking a vote on removing the incubation state from the project life cycle. Everybody should just vote no if that's what they want. That, that in other words, if they want to keep it, then they should just vote no. That's right. That's and right. and so that's what now, what Arno is proposing is that he's proposing that that's what we do. But it, what he's really doing is he's proposing that we take a vote. So we should just take a vote. And if you want to get rid of incubation, we say no. If you want to keep incubation, I'm sorry. If you want to keep incubation, you say no. If you want to remove it, you say yes. <laughs> so just just vote. Come on. <laughs> It's silly. Exactly. I was just trying to get it out and that we can, I mean, it's, I think it's still important to, to have a record of that. It's the yeah. outcome. But, of the yeah, right. But the proposal is to remove the incubation state and we're voting on that proposal. Is yeah. what I think we should be yeah. doing. That, that's what we should because say. Agree. So if that's what you're doing, then I second it. <laughs> okay. So we'll take it Chris's way. The proposal is to forego the incubation state. So I'm just going to update the agenda so that's not confusing. Okay, fine. <laughs> Actually, can you update in notes or, or on the um, actual decision log piece for me, Dan? Well, I think the decision log is correct, right? Okay. Yes, the decision log doesn't change. It's the, 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 what we vote on is actually what's in the decision log. and Right, so to just change the minutes to say proposal forego right. the, you know. Well, what I put down is I put, there's a call to vote by Arno, and then I said, yes to remove, no to keep, Chris Ferris. And then I was gonna record the votes from there. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Let's, let's try and keep it. So we're gonna keep me as out. <laughs> this is extremely Y'all are confusing. This is, this is definitely an right. Oxford comma missing somewhere. <laughs> Can we not spend 15 minutes discussing what this is about? So mm -hmm. The proposal is forego the incubation state from the project life cycle. I second that. So second that. So anybody in favor? Say the aye. Aye. Okay, we have one vote for it. Anybody aye. against it? N no. Nay. Nay. <laughs> I'll add myself to that list. But I, there's a lot of people who stay silent. Anybody who wants to be listed as abstaining? I vote, I'm oh, sorry, am I on mute? I vote no. Okay. I'm voting to keep incubation, whichever one that's supposed to be. Yeah, that's a no. <laughs> okay, so let's be clear. We only had one vote in favor of removing incubation that was hot. Anybody else voted against it? Is that correct? Okay. So, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. We had a bunch of no's, but I didn't hear any abstains, and there were. Okay. Any. All right. All right. All right. This is a roll call vote. We're going to do a roll call vote. There we go. Or no, what is your vote? I reject the, the proposal. Chris. No. no. Stan. No. Gary. No. Hart. Yes. Nathan. No. Swethen. No. Tracy. No. All right, there we go. All right, thank you. Thanks. Was, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <right. laughs> I think I thought we would do one minute call and that's it. <laughs> Let's move on. It's been rejected, therefore.
So there were also discussion about the community diversity matrix. And we, I think, you know, I'm not going to remind you what's in the, in the document, the executoria for incubation, it defines it. And there is this aspect, which, you know, we've discussed at length, whether, you know, that it is somewhat subjective. And, but, you know, we have been going back and forth. And in the end, I feel like there was no consensus to, to change anything. So I'm proposing we just keep it as it is defined. And I will remind people that Chris rightfully pointed out, it's not an RAC. Uh, Apache, the Apache Software Foundation has something extremely similar to this. So it's not like it's not been done before. So that's the proposal. The, I don't see a written proposal though. It's just- The proposal is to keep the existing metric as currently defined. It's in the agenda. Uh, where do we have the project incubation? Right there. It's, uh, click there's on. a yep. right. There's a project lifecycle document that defines the criteria. So the the proposal here is to can you say it like with no commas or anything? I said the proposal is to keep the existing metric as currently defined in the project incubation exit criteria. Okay, so people should vote yes for stasis, right? Or no for something more dynamic. Okay, should I just go ahead and type that into the proposal page so it is explicit? It's fine, let's do this, please. I second it, if that's what was waiting for us. Okay, Thank so you. our no. Yes. Uh, Chris. Yep. Dan. Right in the official proposal language. Reload. Dan abstains. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Dan is busy writing the proposal. Give me the break. You can't, can't. Never mind. <laughs> I'm chewing gum also. <laughs> I was going to say something, yeah. <clears throat> it's so good I, that we're going to have a break. Everybody needs it. What, I, I'm, I'm, what am I voting on here? I mean, I get this stuff. Yes means I think we should keep it as it is. Yes. I vote keep it as it is. Okay. So, Dan, how, your vote <laughs> is? Yes. You can reload the page and you can see what I'm Heart. saying yes to. Yes. <laughs> Nathan. Dan changed it and say yes. Nathan. Sweater. Sorry, I had an audio problem. Uh, okay, Nathan, your vote is. I missed what the vote was. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Keep the exit criteria for incubation the same as they are today regarding the diversity aspect. Or change it as outlined in the proposal? No, the proposal, no, the proposal is to leave, leave things be. Then I vote yes. Swetha? Yes. <laughs> Tracy? Yes. Oh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Let Thank the record you. show that the motion finally passed. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more painful than I had anticipated. All right. So you might remember there's a, there was there were three uh, issues that I raised last week, but the last one has to do with the first major release. And so I'm not going to tab it off for now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> discussion brought up an interesting proposal. I think it was Gary first brought it up. Is like maybe we would be better off um, untying this notion of first major release from this notion that the hyperledger staff is spending quite a bit of energy into the promotion of this release. And it's not just the promotion, there's the promotion aspect, but there's also the security audits and so on. So he, he suggested to, we call this promoted release. And so I 
actually put a re, uh, I raised this issue as a proposal uh, and I, I'm not calling for a vote yet, but I wanted to discuss this a bit further because I think it has quite a bit of uh, potential. And uh, in particular, I mean, Tracy actually commented to the proposal saying, well, would we then remove this notion of first major release? And uh, I think there is a big advantage to this, which would be that we have this case that like in Besu, for instance, where they have had several major releases before. And then there was this question, well, is the first major release uh, one zero? And we said, well, maybe not. But then things become really confusing because what we call first major release is not a one zero. And so if we forego the whole first major release thing that we don't need to rely on for the purpose of our process, I think it actually simplifies things. All right. And, and I think I think Dano also brought up the point that what if all you're doing is making an API change and then per the Semver yes. uh, mm -hmm. you know, criteria, that means you have to change it to a you know X dot zero release, which is quote unquote a major release in Semver parlance and uh, and that's not really what we want. Um, and so it's it, I, yeah. I think I think the proposal then is that we're yeah, or, or you know what we're working towards is that instead of calling it the first major release that we call it the first promoted release or something to that effect. Yeah. And it takes on the meaning that I think if because I hell I wrote the damn charters and stuff like that. So I think it takes on the meaning the intent that we had which was it would be the first one that Hyperledger expends any effort in promoting. <laughs> That's right. So I think it does have quite some merit, some merit and yeah. um, I just wanted to bring it up because I thought this is an interesting uh, idea. And, yeah. uh, and again, I mean, this is, uh, Dave Hughes, I want to I, I jump in and say, I really appreciate this clarity because getting security audits done um, with the major releases hasn't really lined up. We've done already two or three, I think three, that weren't X not zero releases. So I think this is going to reflect reality a lot more and make things easier on everybody's expectations. And there's a, of course, there's a side note to this, which is that, you know, we have today as a criteria to be able to do a first major release was that you have to be in active status. And I believe that we would, we might still want to say this is the case for a promoted release or first yes. promoted release, but I, then this would not apply for a major release. So projects like, you know, Explorer for one could definitely have their, a major release and maybe Besu as well could have a major release. And, you know, none of this would be tied to being in active status, which I think would relieve a little bit the pressure that projects and the TSE and everybody as a result, uh, you know, on this moving to active status sooner rather than later. Well, except so that I think again, we're just, I think sorry, we're just man. renaming now. Can we just say that this is renaming first major release to first promoted release, and then we still have all the criteria that we need in place, and we're not just yeah. doing everything right. So. I, I agree with that. I do question though whether we want it to be first promoted release or promoted release. Do we expect that uh, when we hit 2.0 for Fabric, right? Is that going to be also a promoted release that has a security scan that has all of the criteria yes. that we had with the 1.0? I think that's a yes, right? That we would want that, um, which to me then says it's just promoted releases. Right. I, uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I agree with Tracy again, because it's not just the first one. Um, you know, we talked about this, we did the security scans on 1.4. Um, and the, the, the reason for that was because it was a major release. There was an awful lot of stuff in it. It just didn't have the breaking change that needed a 2.0. And we knew we were coming up with a 2.0. And so we said, can we do a security scan on that since it was long-term support? And so you know, again, something like LTS, I think merits promotion. And so also merits the, you know, give me a security scan, give me some, you know, press and coverage and, and, and all that other stuff. But I do think that the, 
point that Tracy's making is we're not really changing anything, we're just renaming this thing. Although again, I think that the first piece of it is really changing a process because we do want to have the attendant things happen if you know somebody comes up with another major one, you know, other long-term support or whatever. Um, but it also brings forward that you really want to have, you, you, I think we don't want to necessarily expend a bunch of resources because a project says, oh, it's another major release three weeks after they just done another one, so they get a lot of press, <laughs> probably, or, or a lot of, uh, you know, things. We probably want to have it, you know, somewhat scrutinized, and I don't know, Brian, I mean, I don't know what we can, you know, do from a, from a uh, you know, limiting perspective, but... Chris, I thought there's a requirement to actually have this approved by the TSC. Yes. So I was yeah, to... right. But I, I again, I think it, it just brings to bear. You know, we don't want every just time every time as a breaking change that it 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 gets a whole lot of promotion. Yeah. No, but so that's the point. There no, no, I I, I understand. Getting rid of first is what Tracy's proposing, and I agree with that. But I also think that it just brings with it that well that means we have to give it a little bit of thought and we have to agree yeah this is this merits promotion which includes the security scans and all the things so we have tsc approval for the first major release and then i just put a link into chat for what we decided uh in september what the criteria was for subsequent releases yes uh, so there might Based on what Chris is saying, maybe there's an additional proposal here that we update the criteria for subsequent promoted releases such that they have to also um, come. No, actually, maybe the way this is worded, they have to fulfill the same requirements uh, as for yeah. first major release, which does imply that they have to come in for TSC approval. I, I think Chris and Tracy were saying that maybe we could have, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, but the question was about multiple promoted releases. Yes, yeah. that's what I was suggesting. Yeah, so I agree with Tracy here that, like, you know, I'm fine with projects having multiple promoted releases as long as the TSC approves. Yeah. And, and I'm totally okay with switching the name to promoted release. Uh, so, to you know, so projects like Besu or projects that already have you know gone above 1.0 in the numbering system can you know, not have to change their numbers. So yeah. I think this makes a lot of sense, and I think we need to also probably coordinate with the marketing committee. Um, it was interesting. I read over a bunch of the Apache documents over the last week uh, and, and sort of the way they handle marketing for, for say, like incubated projects is much more restrictive. Um, so, so I think we should, we should have some discussion with the marketing committee about how projects are marketed. And if we, uh, if we change this promoted release thing, I think that would be a good opportunity. Sorry for the monologue. Okay. No, no, it's good. Thank you, Howard. I mean, I, I don't know that Apache does much marketing overall, but uh, but I wanted to get back to Dan's point, though, because I have to admit that this the thought of just renaming first major release to promoted release came through my mind too, but I just. I couldn't, and you know, I've been traveling a lot across multiple time zones, so maybe it wasn't the best time for me to get clear mind on that. And I couldn't quite follow through completely in my mind on the impossible implication and whether I was comfortable with just taking that shortcut. But maybe it is the right thing to do, is just to so-called rename it. It was just safer for me to introduce something new and then we can look at the major release and say, well, we don't really need this anymore, so we just remove it, which is equivalent. But uh, like I said, uh, so if, if, uh, if, I mean, Dan, have you thought through this all the way and convinced yourself that this is the same? Yeah. 
uh, I also convinced myself that we run the risk of continually reopening these life cycle questions that we had closed off. Like mm -hmm. this, this one is like September 5th. So uh, I think it's always easy to go back to topics that we feel familiar with because they're easy for us to delve into more and more detail, but kind of like how we would handle sprints in our software projects. We get something to the state that we can get it into within a reasonable no amount of time and then we need to move on to new features or new topics. But we're still refining this. I, I don't feel like we're quite rehashing the same question here. Uh, Dan, I agree with you, but I think the BESU process brought up a lot of new points that, you know, at least for me, were not obvious before. So any other way there are some people who we haven't heard of from and so I'd like to hear from more people how do they feel about this I don't think we necessarily need to make a decision now I did not expect it this is why I put this as a discussion item but uh, I feel like you know maybe we have to think a bit more through this and figure out what the exact proposal ought to be but well I you know again I think some of this stuff did come to light afterwards um, I don't think that, I mean, while I, I do agree that decisions, you know, are final, that if new information comes in, and I think Dano made some salient points, I think others did as well, and we ought to take that under consideration. And I think this is a good example where, okay, so we're still calling it a major release, but that sort of conflicts with the realities of, you know, when you're dealing with a project and you have to make a breaking change, do you want that to be a major release or is it just a breaking change? Now it could be that they're coincident, right? That going to a breaking change requires some promotion to help people understand what's going on. Um, but it could also be the case that like we had with 1.4 of fabric that you have a major release because you're doing something like declaring long-term support for an existing, you know, or, you know, newly published release, um, and you want to uh, raise awareness of that as well, and so you have to seek permission and so forth, and you probably want to go through all the processes. So I'm, I think it's, it's probably a good thing that we're changing it from major release to promoted release, and that we already have decided that it's not just first, it's all of them, right, um, that apply the criteria. Um, and I, but I also think that, you know, we shouldn't be at too prescriptive of what, you know, the criteria is for a promoted release. It should just be, you know, kind of like, you know, judge whatever it was who says, I can't tell you what the definition of obscenity is, but I know it when I see it. And so I think that that's what we have to sort of do here is say from a promoted release perspective that the team that wants to promote their release needs to come forward with a reasonable justification and, um, and we decide. I want to jump in and, and say, I totally agree with Chris here on technical and security grounds. Uh, 1.4 <laughs> definitely deserved a security release or sorry, a security audit. And we also have the Oroha project coming up, getting a refresh on their security audit, even though they don't have any breaking changes. They have significant rework of the cryptographic capabilities in their platform. So it doesn't warrant a 2.0, but there's enough changes in the critical, the safety critical stuff, the security critical stuff that it deserves more scrutiny on a security audit. And uh, security audits are expensive and I would like the guidance from the TSC. Um, basically, if we tie these to promoted releases, tie the security audits to promoted releases, then I will get the guidance from the TSC that, that would make my job easier um, and make me more comfortable spending the hyperledger money on these. So I, I think Chris is entirely right. Um, and I, I think this change is a good one. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Sweta, Tracy, you've been silent. I don't know if I have much more to add. I think Chris kind of summarized what my thoughts were as well. Um, I think I, I definitely like the idea of removing first major release from the promotion aspect of it. Um, it also makes 
lets projects make some more, you know, decisions that make sense for them, right? As you said, I think removing it from SEMVAR is a pretty good uh, proposal and decision, in my opinion. All right, thank you. I would like to add, I also think this is a good idea. Um, and most of the projects are putting in their re quarterly reports what releases are coming up as well as what releases they already did. And so, uh, you know, I'm not really worried with a project going off the rails and doing something really crazy with their version numbers because everyone's already practicing Semver and I think doing a, a pretty responsible job of how they're versioning their project as a whole. And so uh, this allows the TSC to focus on just the things that will spend resources or need for more broad promotion. Um, and let the maintainers have the trust that they've already done a pretty good job with in terms of the day-to-day you know, -day managing of version numbers. All right, thank you. Okay, it seems like everybody seems to be in agreement that this is a good move. I don't know. Do we want to um, vote and just replace major release by promoted release? So is that we would also be allowing multiple promoted releases, right? Yeah, if we do. It doesn't change that. Yeah, it doesn't change that. It's basically until you're at this stage, you, can, you can't ask for any promoted releases. <laughs> I don't think we're saying you have to go through the same process every time for a promoted release, are we? That's the existing. Yeah. Verbiage. Yeah. Yes, I think it is that that, that implies that, uh, Gary. Why you think that's bad? Again, I think they they can be coincident. I just. Um, that's, fine. But, okay, that's fine. Yeah. You can change your version number and republish things without going through this process. This process yeah. is yeah. you want to put some money behind it. So. Right. I mean, I think, uh, I can't remember, you know, who it was that brought it up, but Explorer, they wanted to go to 1.0, but they're not active and uh, it may not be necessary for promotion, but it does signal to the community, hey, this is ready for prime time and that's okay. You know, that's okay. Um, and um, that would be good, you know. All right, let's try it then. I I'm proposing to replace First major release by promoted releases. Second. Oh, well, let's. I, I, so, it, I know. I, I actually think we need to have specific language that says yeah, what we mean, right? I think we all on this call know what we mean, but we're going to go off and have a bunch of grog or you know whatever you know <laughs> <laughs> in the next week or so, and. <laughs> We probably want to write down what we mean. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I, I, yeah, I agree. This is why I didn't really want to propose it, but now it sounds like everybody's in agreement. I'm like, maybe you should seize the opportunity. <laughs> you probably you're probably wise. That's, 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 that's why you're the chair, Arno. You're a wise man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically, you're just replacing the word, yeah, you know, the words first major release with uh, promoted release. Uh, no, but I was proposing that actually let's forego, let's, let's not vote yet. I'll come, I'll, I'll write down what I, you know, I'll capture from here, write it down, send it out in also in an email and make sure everybody is in agreement what we mean by promoted release, what it, what it entails. Okay. Sounds good. I'll take uh, and, Chris's offer. Yeah. And Chris, take a look at the, uh, the life cycle. Have, oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'll, what I'll do is I'll propose the set of changes. So, yeah. Cool. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. My All right. Opinion. So that marks the end of the official agenda. <laughs> bring up anything else. There was a question in chat. Um, Dano, if you want to, if you think this is a, a good forum for it. Yeah, so um, in the exit criteria, it mentions committers and it's mentioned nowhere else in any governing document than what a committer is. I think that's a copy over from the Apache docs back in the day when they were using Subversion rather than GitHub. Um, and now with GitHub, you can be a committer and not be the one merging it in. So I'd like some clarification of does that map to contributor? Does it map to maintainer? I don't care which, I think we should be clear about it. 
Yeah, it was. It's probably supposed to be maintainer. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the term we used in the in the charter. So the 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 decision that you're requesting is that 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 word is replaced with the word maintainer. Sure, maintainer contributor. Pick one. I don't care. Yep. No, I'll. Uh, Dano, thanks for pointing that out. I'll I'll update it in the proposal change. So Dano, I'm sorry, I didn't see that the question you raised. That was in Zoom. Okay. It was in Rocket Chat. Zoom's disabled. I uh, I use my superpowers to send him a message, and and I sent you a message as well. Oh, so it wasn't in the TSC chat? No, it is. It is. How come I don't see it? I don't see it. Can we get clarification? It's it's seven thirty three a.m. Well, on my time, right? Yeah, I yeah. saw it. It's there. It's I there promise. for me anyway. I don't. No, well, okay. I'm okay. Sure there's it is. so scroll back. There's one question with like three <laughs> thumbs up. Oh, okay. yes. Can we get clarification on what role computer and maps do? Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any disagreement on what's implied there? I think we definitely meant maintainer. But where is the instance in which we have committer? It's in the criteria, I think, yeah. for, uh, for release. Uh -huh. I'll uh, I'll fix it, or in, in in the proposal I'll fix it. Wait, that's a different thing, though, isn't it? Yes. Wait, hold on. If we wanted to be really crazy, we could put together one proposal that says replace. <laughs> fix <the> these. <laughs> Major fix <laughs> this stuff here. Well, we're eventually it'll all be in the same document, right? But we just aren't there yet. <laughs> I, I, I think right. examples this like this crazy. are why we need the task force portion is because this is more of a typo than it is a policy. Um, yeah. 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 Well, okay. I, I will, I will put together a proposal that includes this and the other. <laughs> you put it on an action. Item. Yeah. It looks like we just copied this straight from Apache. So. Okay, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, it's good too. Okay, all right. Anything else? So, just quickly, I mean, uh, Chris, is there any update on your task force for the? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. We no, I now? have to. Uh, I have to get that back, but I'm not going to do that until next year. So. Yeah, no, I figured. So nothing really happened. No, no, no. I became a grandfather, and I had a few other things. No, no but it's life. fine. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not blaming you. I just wanted yeah, yeah. to. Know there was something I didn't know about. Oh. No. Okay. All right. That's all. Okay. We have two minutes left, but I'm happy to close early. So it seems like everybody needs a break anyway. So I'm going to thank you all for joining today. Thank you for uh, working together this year. I look forward to next year. In the meantime, enjoy the holidays. I sure will try to do that. And I'll toss in that uh, Hyperledger's fourth birthday just passed earlier this week. So Woo! Woo! yes, good news to that. Happy all birthday. Right. Yeah, if you haven't read the report, go read it. It's pretty awesome. I think Jessica did a great job on it. Yeah, it's fun. All right. Celebrate. Very good. Meeting is adjourned. Uh -huh.